Hi everyone, welcome to the channel Bharat Jain D365. So today let's try to explore workflow. Workflow is basically the approval process that's the organization would require. Now the approval can be based on different condition criteria like the amount criteria or based on the hierarchy as per the business requirement. So first let's try to understand the basics of workflow. Through the series of videos let's understand the different complexity in the setup related to workflow. So before we start with the example and the actual workflow setup, first let's do the setup related to notification and user language. So when I say notification, when a workflow is submitted, the user would need a notification. Now this notification can be in the form of email or it can be in the form of uh, here in the action center. So go to settings, user options. Now this user option setting has to be done for both the user who is submitting the workflow as well as the user who is going to approve the transaction. Go to workflow. If you need email notification, enable this. Note for email notification, just enabling this would not be sufficient. There is other setup that's required, which I will be doing a separate video for that. Then you have to send notification to Action Center. Once this is enabled, a notification comes for the workflow in the Action Center. Same. The second thing that needs to be done is the user language. Now this, if you don't do and go for the workflow setup and when the workflow is submitted, that is when you will get the error saying the language mismatch. So what is this language mismatch? So if you go to our legal entity, when a legal entity is created, there's a language that we default to this particular legal entity. So you can see the language English US. So make sure the same language is assigned for the user op option as well. So if I go to preferences, in the preferences language, I'll make sure this is U English US, which has to match to my legal entity language. If there's a mismatch, as I told you, you will get an error. So make sure this two setup is done even before starting with the workflow setup. Now, let's try to understand an example here. So as I told you, we are trying to focus to understand the basics of workflow. So I'm taking a simple workflow where there is no condition. User A creates and submits the transaction for approval and user B is going to approve the transaction. So then this workflow is applicable, let's say for all the modules from the finance like GL, AP, AR or can be applied to your SCM modules. So here, let's take an example of GL entry. So when a journal entry has to be posted, let's say this particular workflow is applicable. So we need to configure for GL entry. So let's go back to system. Once the setup is done, now I need to go to GL module since I need to do the workflow setup related to general ledger. So go to general ledger, journal setup, click on general ledger workflows. Now, these are the pre-existing workflow. So to create a new workflow, click new. Once you select new, you can see there are standard workflow type available. So you need to make sure which is applicable for your scenario and select that particular. For example, I need to do for GL entry, which is ledger daily journal workflow. So just click on this. And a suggestion here is to open workflow always from Microsoft Edge. If you try to open workflows from Google Chrome or any other browser, you might get an error. So try to do from Microsoft Edge. So once the workflow opens, you can go to the workflow tab. So this is how the workflow form will open. So here you can see there's a start button. And if I scroll down, there's an end button. So which side you can just drag and drop. So basically once a workflow starts, it has to end. Now here there is this validation. So once the workflow is completed, you can do a validation. Uh, then we have like toolbox. This is for the left element. So if you can just enable or disable the toolbox. Then you can see the error pan, which is in the bottom. So here, uh, when we start, if there's any basic things that's missing, you can see that here error will come. So which will automatically get eliminated once we start configuring the workflow. So that's the error pane. So if you don't want, you can just disable it or enable it. 
So that's about it. And on the left side in the work elements, we can see approved daily journal. Uh, this is the workflow which we're going to use. And you have other conditions which we can add, which we will explore one by one in the series of videos. So currently to have this workflow in place where I would need, uh, you know, simply approved needs to be configured. So within the workflow, let's drag the approved journal here. So this means that there's a workflow that needs to be in place. So let's start the workflow. And once the workflow start, it should go to an approval. Once it's approved, then it should go to end the workflow. So that's how you can see as this line is connected, the error is reduced. Now I can see there are a few more errors which will go once we start, you know, further configuring. So now here you can see the yellow line so that represents the workflow which is selected, so which is the outer layer. So now double click on the approve. So now you can see approve daily journal is selected. So now if you want to go inside where we want to assign the uh, user details that is done at the step level. So before going there, once this approve daily journal is selected, click on basic settings. So here you can see the name that is approved daily journal. Then you have automatic actions, uh, which we can enable. Then you have the notification. So we will see this notification, how it can be enabled, like once it's delegated or escalate or approve or reject. So we can enable notification accordingly, which we will see those details in the next video. So right now for us to assign the approval details, now click on step one you can see the orange line or the yellow line that is now selected the step one details. So here, now you go on the top, click on basic setting. So the name step one, then you have the work item subject. So here I am going to enter the detail approval. So work item instructions approve. So here we have something called insert placeholder. So we will explore the placeholder later. But at this stage, make sure you type a message because it's mandatory. Without that, we will not be able to complete the workflow setup. So once the basic setting is done, now go to assignment. So in the assignment, let's pick user. Now the assignment can be done based on IRK or there are other options which we'll explore. For now, let's use the user option then go to user. So here select the user who should approve the transaction. So let's say I just need one user. So I will drop. If you need more users, you can select all the users and then just simply click on this button and it will be assigned. So then you have time limit, like when the days available per week. So it is basically I'm just selecting the weekdays. That's the default option. Then you have completion policy. So this would be more appropriate when you have multiple users. So you can have single approver in case of, let's say you have three approvers and either one of them approve, then you can select single approver, majority approvers out of three, let's say two has to be approved. Then you can select majority of approvers or you can also put in the percentage of approvers. Let's say if you just have two approvers and you can select percentage and keep 50%. So in that way, there are multiple options or you have all approvers. So if you have multiple users, each one of them has to approve. That's with regards to all approval. So for single user, which is our case, I can leave it at all approvers close. So now we are ready with our workflow setup. And in the below, if you see all the errors is eliminated because all the required setup is completed. So now here you can see workflow, just come back. So this is the workflow which we started. So once the configuration is completed, in the bottom, click save and close. So now you can give the version. So here version one demo. So you can give any version notes that you want to give. Click OK. So then it will ask activate the new version or do not activate the new version. So if I select activate the new version and click OK. So the particular workflow which we have configured, it will be activated automatically. So it will take some time to close and activate. So once the workflow is closed, now let's come back to FNO, click close here. So let me just refresh here. So once I refresh, you can see this is the new workflow, which is 
or this, this one so which is automatically configured so now once the workflow is configured this particular rules we have to now assign that for gl entry so how do we do that let's go to system so, since we need in gl module go to general engine general setup journal names so since the workflow can be assigned for multiple journal names within the gl so you go to the specific journal name where the workflow is required then edit so here make sure you select approval workflow to yes and then in the drop down you can select the workflow which we just configured so there are two workflows so let's say this is the workflow which i recently configured Let's click save and yes save so now whatever workflow i have configured it is assigned to my journal names so once this is completed now let's have a quick demo how the workflow works so to use the transactions go to journal 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 entries then click on the journal journals click new select the journal names select the general rooms where workflow is assigned as soon as you select this you can see push button is grayed out and you will see a toggle button that's called workflow which can be used to submit the transaction now go to lines and fill the transaction so let me quickly add all the transaction so let me select the account i'm randomly selecting the account details then enter the amount so my workflow is irrespective of the amount that I enter. So I'm randomly filling the amount and selecting the offset account. Now, another important thing to note here is once the workflow is enabled for a particular transaction, make sure you always validate the transaction before submitting for workflow. That is because let's say you have some basic errors. Let's say cost center uh, mismatch is there and then you submit the workflow workflow is approved then you try to post then you will get the error now imagine the time that is consumed to submit the workflow approve now you need to reinitiate every process so instead we always advise that you do validate before submitting the workflow once the transaction is validated now let's go back here and go to workflow and click submit and then you can add some comment approval request so whatever comment the user wants they can insert here and then click submit this is how a user can submit the workflow once the workflow is submitted now the user who has to approve the workflow will get the notification and based on the notification they go they can go and submit the, or approve the workflow so now here in the drop down once it's submitted my option now is recall so I can either recall or go to view history just to see where the process of workflow is. So currently you can see here workflow is activated. So it's still running as a bad job. Once it completes, now you can see work item is created and you can see who is the user that is going to approve the workflow. So now it's from the user perspective or the submitter perspective, it's completed. Yes, just wait. Now from the approval perspective, let's say I am the approver as well in this case. So from the approver screen, if I go to workflow, here I will find these options. Also, you can see there's a notification saying you have been assigned a work item. This is because the notification is enabled and I am the part of approval group. So now I can go here, I can either approve, reject, request change. If I notice some changes, I can request change. I can delegate instead of me, someone can work, approve the workflow. So these are the different options that I have. Now let's say I'll click approve. So with this, we can complete our workflow. So we have understood what is workflow, which is related to the approval process. What is the basic things that we need to do in order to configure the workflow? That's it for today's video. In the upcoming videos, we will see how we can add different condition to the existing workflow. Thanks everyone.